God of War Ragnarok. How did Kratos go from Greek guillotine to Norse nurturer? Ragnarok. Not the Thor version, which was kind of cool, but they fucked it up with Love and Thunder, but the God of War type. No, not Ares, but the Norse kind. I I'm confused. But it's here, God of War Ragnarok. So join us as we explore how the baddest motherfucker in the land ended up hugging trees. And we were totally cool with that. After what feels like forever, we are finally able to experience the next chapter in the God of War series with God of War Ragnarok. We're excited it's nearly here, but it's been a long, hard road for Kratos. First, he was betrayed by Greek gods and fooled into killing his entire family. Then he went on a bloody mission of vengeance to viciously murder just about every member of the Greek pantheon and anyone associated with them. However, all of that pales in comparison to his plight in the most recent God of War sequel, or rebuquel, Raising a Son. Throughout God of War 2018, you get a front row seat to a father-son bonding exercise. Solving puzzles, ripping Draugr in half with bare hands, and even murdering a Norse god right in front of his mom in one of the most balls-to-the-wall boss fights in the franchise's history. These all serve as mini-activities that drive forward the core narrative of Kratos learning to keep a lid on his unbridled rage for the sake of his son, who also seems to suffer from the same affliction. Navigating this genetic curse played a big part of God of War 2018, and it appears that it will continue to be a theme in God of War Ragnarok. But just how did Kratos go from being a Greek god butcher to a nurturing Norse daddy? Let's take a look at the creative process that brought us the big papa we know and love. When Sony Santa Monica Studio unveiled their reimagined God of War game in 2016, it dropped more than a few jaws. A completely new, over-the-shoulder perspective, and a different yet familiar Kratos, and the infamous boy. Gone were Kratos' legendary Blades of Chaos, replaced by a distinctly not Greek-looking new weapon called the Leviathan Axe. From the setting and presentation, it was clear that this would be a great departure from what fans had come to know as God of War. Those very same fans will remember that there wasn't much left to do at the end of God of War 3. The grand finale of that trilogy saw Kratos opening a can of whoop-ass on Zeus, bringing an end to his vengeance while simultaneously causing the end of the world with a great flood. When Cory Barlog stepped into the coveted role of game director once more, he previously co-directed God of War 2 with series creator David Jaffe, he knew he wanted to take this adventure to new places in a completely new environment with a different set of deities to conquer. Barlog and the team settled on the rich world of Norse mythology, but early concepts also had the game taking place in Egypt. The game director's reasoning for using Norse instead of Egyptian mythology was that they wanted to hone in on Kratos' story and develop him more as a character, giving him some depth rather than keeping him the same hateful rage monster that he had been in on, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six games that make up his Greek era. Egyptian mythology was considered too complex and would require more explanation. The thinking was that the mainstream audience is already familiar with Greek mythology thanks to the Thor movies. Except for that second one, it's absolute trash. Thor, the Dark World? More like Thor the Dork World. <laughs> Got him! By building their narrative within the confines of North mythology, the creative team was able to frame an incredibly affecting story around Kratos and Atreus, without spending too much time going over who they are facing. If you paid careful attention during the game, you would also notice that they even planted the seeds for Kratos to cross over into other mythologies once his Norse adventure wraps up, which seems might be the case after Ragnarok, which translates to Doom of the Gods, and is literally the end of the world in Norse mythology. Kratos has already survived one end of the world, so it stands to reason that he'll be just fine after this one. Well, maybe. Thor's big, chubby fingers seem to be giving him the business in the last few trailers. Thankfully, we won't have to wait much longer to see Kratos' and Atreus' fate, since Thor Ragnarok is either out or will be out shortly. I don't really have any way of knowing, I just read the script, it's up to someone else to put the video out. Hell, I could be sitting in my living room playing the game in my underwear by the time you see this. If that ends up being the case, I wish you happy God of War Ragnarok Day, and may your underwear be forever clean. So what's your favorite God of War game, and don't you dare say Ascension? Let us know in the comments, but remember to treat each other well. And while you're here, why don't you check out our look at the Silent Hill transmission and see what you may have missed. And if you like Resident Evil, you definitely want to stay tuned for our upcoming story behind episode on Resident Evil 2. I'm Mike Golchinski, and I will see you in the next video.